I'm Dana K. White. I am the author of Decluttering at the Speed of Life and the creator of the No Mess Decluttering Process. And today we're going to talk about seasonal clothing changeover. This is a subject I've been asked to address and it's also kind of a controversial subject. So let me just tell you how I'm going to approach this. So I have been at my deslobification process now for what, like 14 something years. And I no longer do a seasonal clothing changeover. It kind of happened gradually and naturally, which is what we're going to talk about. Um, but I know that everybody's in different situations on how much space you actually have to have the clothes that you're wearing and blah, 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 and closet space and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of you are at a very different place in your own decluttering journey. So we're going to talk about it and I'm going to share with you my story and what ultimately I encourage you to make your goal, which is to not have to do one because you've decluttered to that point. Again, your space might demand it, but we're going to talk about this. So here's the reason that I'm covering all of that here at the beginning. When I was completely overwhelmed in my home, my seasonal clothing changeovers were real big deals, like real big deals. I mean, they took me days. They involved the whole living room being covered in clothing. They were huge things. And I thought this was something I had to do. Even though as I'm standing here talking to you right now, I'm thinking, I don't remember my mother ever doing that, but I thought I had to do this, right? And I remember having a conversation with a very naturally, highly organized friend. And something came up about how I was going through my seasonal clothing changeover. And she was like, why do you do that? And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, like it, it made no sense, but that's all she said. She just said, why do you do that? But, and I was like, well, cause how would I not do that? Right? Like it didn't make any sense to me. Little quick note. Um, why? And like just, which is like, you know, just don't have that many clothes. Yeah. Those are not helpful words to someone who is completely overwhelmed. So I am not going to come from that angle of just don't have so many clothes, you know? Yeah. That's not helpful. I actually train my decluttering coaches, you know, who are trained in my method to never ask why or use the word just, right? Because those are not helpful words to the person who's overwhelmed. So we're going to talk about how to go through your seasonal clothing changeover with decluttering in mind with the goal of maybe if possible with your space, eventually years down the line, you might not even have to do it anymore because that's what happened to me. I realized after I had been decluttering and decluttering and decluttering that a couple years had gone by and I was like, wait, I don't do a seasonal clothing changeover anymore because my clothes fit in my closet and it wasn't overwhelming to me anymore. Okay. But that's just kind of one of those things for you to know is possible. Even if you're the person that it's a three day process and it messes up your whole house. Okay. So how do you go through the seasonal clothing changeover? I mean, you know, basically, right? Like you're packing up your stuff that's going to be out of season and you are unpacking and putting up your stuff that is for the current season that you're going into, right? Um, the other frustration was always, y'all, I live in Texas and I, I feel like it's one of those things where people say, well, if you live in Texas, the weather, the, but I think everybody everywhere, except for maybe San Diego, I don't know says the same stuff, like just wait for the weather to change. If you were unpredictable, whatever. Okay. But the reality was that I would do the seasonal changeover and then the weather would go back to being hot or go back to being cold or whatever. And it was always frustrating, right? So it's nice to not have to do that. So as you are going into your seasonal clothing changeover, remember the container concept. Okay. The container concept is that space is finite. If you try to keep more stuff, then you have space to keep that stuff. There is no hope of your stuff ever being under control. Okay. So that applies to clothing too. I didn't used to know that clothing could be clutter because I thought clothing is useful. You got to have it. I mean, really, you really, really do please. But 
I thought because it's useful, it can't be clutter. And then I realized, oh, I have so much that it's out of control all the time. Therefore, it's clutter. Okay, so just kind of have it in your mind. Clothing can be clutter and know that the space that you have determines how much clothing you can keep. Okay, now when you're going through the seasonal clothing changeover, if you have in the past been like, well, I never have enough room. The first step is not to go buy more bins, right? The first step is to acknowledge this is the space that I have for the clothing that I am currently wearing for the season that I'm going into. And this is the space that I have for out of season clothing that doesn't make my other parts of my life harder to live. Okay, when I say that, what I mean is my living room is for living. My living room is not for storing clothing that I don't have room for in my closet. Okay, and maybe you have a basement. I always thought a basement would solve all my problems because we don't have basements where I live. Um, more storage is not the solution. The solution is accepting and acknowledging the storage that you have. So for me, I got to the point, okay, where I wasn't, I mean, I used to, when I started out, I had different random storage things all over the house where I would stick out of season clothing. But as I went through the process and I was decluttering more and more, I acknowledge that the closet shelf above the clothing in uh, the closet, that's where I'm going to store the things that need to be out of season, okay, that I need to store until the next season, right? Don't do that anymore, but whatever. So you acknowledge the space that you have, which is your actual closet, not your closet plus all the other places you've put things before. And you acknowledge this is the space that I have for, um, you know, putting out of season things, right? And then before you actually start switching anything, just go through and get rid of the things that you are never going to wear. Okay. Because they're stained, they're torn, they are shrunk beyond, you know, that you don't like them anymore. They're out of style. Go ahead and just declutter those. So the the, the supplies that you need for this are, yes, if you're going to do the seasonal clothing changeover, right? Um, yes, you've got to have some sort of something to put it in, but try to get an equal sized donate box, right? With your goal being I'm going to try to donate as much as I can. So before you ever start moving things around, because it can feel like, I think this is one of the reasons why people have asked me to talk about this, is it can feel like, and I know because I felt this way before myself, there is no other option but to pull everything out and lay it everywhere, except that I'm the kind of person, and I know a lot of you are too, if you're not, yay for you. Uh, a lot of us are the types of people who, if we ever pile things everywhere, we get overwhelmed, life happens, and they end up piled there forever, and then they end up shifting, and then they fall on the floor, and they get dog hair on them, and they have to be washed, and they, okay? So, I mean, like, I get it, right? Okay, so I, that was one of the reasons why it was such an overwhelming thing to me to do the seasonal clothing changeover, right? So, before you ever do that, work on putting stuff into the donate box. Okay. So look for the stuff that is incredibly obvious, is decision free, is not difficult for you to, to go, oh, you know, so you look through here and you're like, oh, that's right. Actually, this is that, you know, that white shirt that has a stain on it. You know, if it has a stain, if you don't know for sure that you're place where you donate clothing likes having stained clothes, you know, then go ahead and throw it in the trash. Some places like to have it because they sell it to rag makers. But go ahead and pull those things out so that you lessen what you're actually dealing with. Because as you decrease the amount of stuff that you're going to have to actually make decisions about, that you're going to actually have to deal with in the seasonal clothing changeover, you're also decreasing the amount of overwhelm that you're going to feel when you get to that point and you have to make some kind of hard decisions, right? So just having less in the space is automatically less overwhelming. Okay, so first thing you do, go ahead and stick stuff in the donate box. Go ahead and, step, and get stuff out of there. Do the same thing 
with the clothes that you had packed up that are now coming into your closet, okay? So same thing, go through that stuff and don't say, why would I have put it in there if, I, if it was that bad, y'all? I, depending on where you are in your decluttering journey, I know for me, I used to be like, well, maybe when I take this out next year, I'll like it. Maybe next year this will somehow not have a stain anymore or not, What? I don't know go ahead and look, right? There also may be things that you're like, well, I didn't expect for skinny jeans to ever go away. But in this period of time, and please don't take fashion advice from me <laughs> like anyone would. Anyway, but like this is the reality, right? Like, okay, puff sleeves, whatever. Maybe those are out now. So we go ahead and we get those out. So just do those obvious things just so that as you start going through the process, you have less stuff, right? Okay. Now, and here's where it gets a little bit complicated because we don't want to pull everything out of the space. That's the basis of the no mess decluttering process, right? Go ahead and start going one item for one item, okay? And I know it's a little bit weird, but as you are pulling things out of your packed up stuff from last season, do one for one, okay? So as you take something out of there that yes, is something that I want to, you know, keep. The other beauty of that, it's, it's a great opportunity. This process is a great opportunity to declutter. Really focus on decluttering, knowing that Tana said she doesn't even have to do this anymore. What? Know from the beginning, the more I can declutter, the better this is going to be, okay? The better this is going to be long-term for me. So as you take something out, pick your favorite stuff out of your stored stuff first. Like get the stuff that you're most excited about wearing in the next season. Take that out first and take something from your stuff, you know, that you're thinking you're going to put away. Pick your favorite thing there and swap those two things, right? If it's seasonal, I know it can get a little bit like, oh, but this is all in one place and I need to see. just try it. Try it to avoid the making piles, okay? This is also going to have me acknowledging the reality of this container all along, okay? So I'm not just wishful thinking anything. I am dealing with the actual container. So one for one, favorite thing there, favorite thing there. As you do that, it is very likely that as you're looking for favorite things, you're going to identify non-favorite things, okay? Those things can go in the donate box. Hopefully, you're going to need lots of donate boxes, right? But go through that looking for favorites and, and doing that. If you've gone through one bin and your space is full and you've got five more bins, okay, well, then I'm going to be looking through those bins with the idea of what in here do I love enough that I'm willing to get rid of something else that's already hanging up, okay? So I go through this bin, I find my very favorite sweater, and I'm like, oh, I love this sweater, right? Oh, okay, this absolutely deserves space. So I'm not saying, oh no, I can't keep my favorite sweater. All I'm saying is, I love this sweater. What do I love that's already filling up this space less than I love this sweater. Okay. That in and of itself will naturally sort out things like, I love that sweater. It is wool and we don't wear wool sweaters in Texas because it's basically never that hot. I'm sure some people do. I don't, but like that kind of thought process, instead of starting with those kinds of questions like Dana, get tough, get rid of the things that you're never. No, I just say, you know what? I love this one. Okay. What do I love less? Oh, actually that reveals, I don't, these are the things I would actually wear. I react to this one more, but these are the things I would wear and I'm not going to get rid of one of them to keep this wool sweater. Okay. So that process of acknowledging this reality of this space and acknowledging the reality of the space that I have to put things away, that is going to naturally help me declutter throughout this process. I go through it with the knowledge that I am going to use this thing that I feel like I have to do anyway as motivation and opportunity to declutter. 
because I need to declutter. I'm going to acknowledge the reality of this space and I'm going to acknowledge the reality of my storage space. And that is what gets to stay. Okay. So how does this get you to the point where you no longer have to do this? If you actually do have the space for multiple seasons worth of things. Um, just having less makes my life easier. My life being easier, having less laundry, fewer clothes to get all over the floor, that changes my perspective on my clothes and it makes me want the space over the stuff, okay? And that gradual change in how I feel about my stuff and I go, you know what? I'm choosing an easier to manage closet. And therefore it just, it over the years, it loosened my grip on stuff, right? The other thing to remember is if you find yourself agonizing over something as you pull it out, thinking, oh my goodness, but what if I, what if I'm, what if I'm gonna, what if I'm gonna finally learn how to repair that thing? Or what if I'm gonna actually do the thing, you know, and you're, it's causing you all this angst? do your best. I'm going to say, I'm not going to say don't because, you know, do what you want to do. And I know that this is a journey for a lot of us to get to this point. Do your best to let it go. Thinking of how, if I let it go now, then this process of changing things over next year is going to be so much easier. I'm not going to have to go through the agony over this top that has a hole in it or whatever. I'm not going to have to go through that again. I am making things easier for the next time that I go through this because when you're putting things in boxes, and this is one of the reasons why I try to never just put things in boxes to store. I just try to have things in the house where they belong as opposed to just storing them for later. Because when you're putting it into a box, it is so easy to stick it in there thinking future me is going to have it more together than current me. Future me is going to know what to do with this item. Future me is actually going to be at a place in my life where I will find a seamstress who can put the embroidery on there that I had the idea that that would cover that stain or what, like I'm going to find that, or I'm going to learn how to do it. Future me is going to be able to do that. But every time you put something in to a box for future me to be the one who knows what to do with it, when you go back through that box as future me causes a lot of resentment toward past me, right? Like, Future me, that's a lot of pressure. And it's also a reminder of, oh, I thought I was going to have it more together this year. <sighs> Great. But you know what? Here's the good news. If I get rid of stuff, the more I get rid of, the more I have things together. Like the more I have it together, whatever it is, right? The more I declutter the more bandwidth I have to do those kinds of things. And so I'm actually moving myself closer to being that person I want to be by getting rid of the item. I'm not putting pressure on that person, but I am freeing up space and freeing up bandwidth because I never have to look at or think about or feel bad about that item again. Okay. All right. So what are the keys? The container concept, the space you have, for current clothing is the space that you have. The space you have for off-season clothing is the space that you have. That determines how much of this stuff I can have. And the more that I declutter down to those limits, the more I'm willing to let clothing go, the more I'm able to experience how much easier it is to live in a house with less stuff, and the more ready I'm going to be able to get rid of even more next year, right? And then eventually, you might get to the point that my friend was at that she didn't know how to explain to me how to get there because it was just so weird to her to have so many clothes. And I was like, well, we don't get each other. I get y'all. I totally get y'all. Okay. I hope this was helpful. I will talk to y'all next week. Bye.